today we're going to have a look at the oil pumps for the lubrication systems. Sitting in the lowest point of the transmission we've got this filter screen unit. Its job is to sieve out the large bits and pieces to stop it from going into the lube oil pump which bolts down to the casing and it gets driven by the input shaft from the clutch unit which means that even if the vehicle is not running as long as it's in neutral and the driver has their foot off the clutch this oil pump will be turning and it'll be circulating oil through the system then of course we've got the oil pump for the final drive and the t-drive unit normally lives up in here and it too gets driven by a shaft that goes through the t-drive housing and into the counter shaft which also keeps this oil pump turning even if the tank's not moving the first thing i'll do is scribe some witness marks on stuff guess you never know with these crazy germans that it may be entirely possible to put a component together in two different ways and one way it's a-ok -okay, the other way it's complete disaster this looks very similar to the stug 3 gearbox oil pump so i'm not actually going to try and take the drive gear off of the shaft because that proved to be a real bear to try and get that done so i'm just going to split the pump apart get out the pumping elements see what's potentially stopping it from turning so we can see that it's got some tight spots in it. I reckon this is the first time I found a set of castellated nuts that actually don't have split pins in it. So whether it was a design brief or it was an oversight when it was built, I guess we'll never know. Where are you hiding? I don't know if you can see the sunlight through there so it's definitely drilled to accept a split pin but for some reason no split pins were put in. So this is a locating pin with a threaded end on it and that's just a conventional M6 bolt. Now I can already see some air gaps in here, so the whole thing just wants to come apart. So help it out. Yeah, so that's really familiar, very familiar. Uh, exactly like the Stug, I think. <laughs> Let me just put a witness mark on here. Just in case. So this is just like a driven gear. The drive gear is splined and attached to the main input gear that then is driven by the transmission. We can see the crud and varnish that's sort of formed. Because there's really nothing wrong that I can see with this apart from the need to give it a good, good bit of a clean, which is excellent, especially for a Friday just the sort of thing you want to finish off Friday with.
Have a look to make sure that the mating surfaces for the two halves of the oil pump are true, and that they're not bent or buckled. I'm also feeling for any nicks and burrs. So far that's all looking really good. So that's sort of the operating clearance of it. Just having a feel for the amount of backlash between the two gears to make sure that there's clearance and I, I didn't expect anything different but it feels feels pretty good to me. I did feel a few rough edges so I'm just going to take my file and just make sure I knock any burrs off of it. See already that's feeling much better. Giving everything a good coating of oil. Little you know, witness marks lined up. So in some situations you would potentially pack this full of some grease just to help with priming. After my experience with the Stug 3, this pump even from dry has enough power to draw oil almost half a metre up in the air, so it's not going to have any problems starting up and pumping it through the system. It's massively over-engineered. I mean, a, an oil pump of this size with these types of gears in here, you'd find that in a high-performance engine with a dry sump. That's yeah, incredibly over-engineered. Feels good. So we've hit what I would call a just a small bump in the road. So the oil pumps all gone back together, everything's fine, but it's been troubling me why there was no split pin installed in here because it's incredibly un-German like to have a castellated nut without a split pin in it. Found a couple of simple reasons. The washers that are being used here are just a little bit too thick. What I'm gonna to have to do is search around for some um, high tensile flat washers that aren't quite as thick as this. And I'm gonna to have to just run a drill bit through here just to make it just big enough to make it easier to get the split pin through for castellate enough. I'm going to park this and put it to one side because life's too short and it's going to be approaching beer o'clock soon. I'll get on to some bit more exciting stuff. We've actually got an oil gallery which is cast into here, runs through underneath here and into the oil filter housing. Each one of the gears has its own dripper. We've got to make sure that that's all scrupulously clean and that there's no crud or anything left in here because if any of these get blocked up, then the respective gears don't get any lubrication. Righto, so where to start? They really didn't want these bits to come apart. Let's have a go at getting this split pin out. It's just a little baby. <laughs> Two different size nuts. That's pretty on brand. It's 
start by prizing this end out, the easy end. <laughs> Just like that, it, it pivots out again. So there's obviously been a fair bit of hand finishing that's taken place to, to get this all to fit in like that. But there you go. Have a look at the amount of machining that goes into making a simple thing like a banjo bowl. So, of course, you've got the hex on it, countersunk a little bit, I guess, to reduce weight. You've got the machine flats on here that locates the washer, and then they neck it down to maximise the oil flow coming up out through the centre. We've got four holes, another machine collar here to locate for the washer, and then the thread that screws into its companion, plus it's all bored out through the centre as well too. It's like incredible amount of work. See, like everything on the transmission, nothing is really super tight. This is another access plug, get into the oil filter housing. This might be able to help me to get some solvent in here to loosen all of this off because I had a terrible time trying to get it out of the Stug 3. Just before I put this one to bed and we maybe never see this again, just to demonstrate the fantastic amount of detail and work that goes into making this. I've got some cast banjos which are then machined off. You have another drilling in which the small diameter pipe is stuck in. You've got a clamp plus the nut, castellated nut. It's all bent into shape. Straight pipe, it's all bronzed together. It's drilled. You can see the machining that goes through. It's all undercut. The end of it is bronzed up and then they drill it to a calibrated hole size. Looks like it. It's tremendous. Straight away, you can see there's a significant difference in the configuration and shape of the two different oil pumps. So I'm actually starting to think that this could actually be a scavenge pump. What this thing does is that it draws the excess oil out of the two final drives and then recirculates it back into the transmission so that the final drives don't end up getting over full with oil. Put a few more witness marks. Same thing on this side. Straight away, the construction of this one's a little bit different because it's got gasket between the pump elements. What do we got here? Well, this is interesting for some people that <laughs> love these types of technical details, or maybe it could be intensely boring for the vast majority of the general public. I find it interesting. <laughs> oh bloody hell another another masterpiece 1930s take on a what do they call it an archimedes screw just incredible absolutely incredible I'm just blessed by the way all of this stuff is coming apart so easily <laughs> it's not often that I get genuinely surprised and delighted by the stuff that I find when I open things up because I mean I knew exactly what was going to be inside this oil pump but I didn't really know what was inside here I knew it was going to be something different but this has exceeded all expectations the finishing of the bore of the pump pump body then you've got this end cap here which the shafts rotate in which are all calibrated to hold it in the correct position and correct tolerance. Just tremendous. Well, it's, it's about that time. I'm starting to get a bit dry and dusty. So I'm looking forward to having a brew or two. And I hope you guys do as well too. So have a good weekend and that's it from Oz Armour for now.